I just want to tell you guys that I'm so excited that you guys are really going to attend my vlog class again. And this time we're learning about mantises. The cutie. Her name's Lynette. Okay, so low heat or mantisiology yeah, um, is going to be co-teaching with me. I cannot wait for him to help me. Okay, so as you guys know that so oh hey mantisiology. So remember that the first time we met when uh, I was at UC Davis and you were at UC Davis? I remember the cute little prey mantis you brought in. That little prey mantis was so cute. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was a really special one. Um, yes. I think you took a picture of it. Really? Or, I forget which one it was exactly. Yeah, I think I remember that it was kind of pinkish. Um, it looked like a baby flower. It looked like a baby flower mantis. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I definitely brought it. you about how ghost mantises are the very best beginner mantis, right? Yeah. You want to get a flower mantis instead, but I learned that the wrong way. Two flower mantises. Sorry, what did you say? I can't, I can't. Oh, sorry. I was just thinking about the two flower mantises I tried to have as when I was a beginner. Mm, Did not yeah. go well. Flower mantises can be kind of hard sometimes when they're when you're first starting out, but those mantises are a good way to go. So, how about we talk about the anatomy? Um, so my brother Colvin is going to be my assistant and hold this up. Okay. You go. Or their cute little antenna. I'm I'm pretty sure they use them for smelling, and I've seen my baby mantises tw twitch them like cutely. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. so cute. But do you know what they really all use for? Because yeah, I don't so know if that's a the, fact. One of the reasons that they're used for is definitely smell. They use it to smell their environment. They also use it to um, interact with each other. So they'll sometimes touch things that they're not sure about. Um, I'm not sure if that exactly helps them smell better, but certainly when they're mating, males will tap their antennae on the females so let them know that they're amazing. Sorry, they're my pretty mantis, uh, my pretty mantis, I met one of my hair doulas. I just got, just climbed off for the little post. Come on, girl. Give me a hand. There we go. <laughs> you see the cute little antenna? And if you touch them, they'll either start moving forward or they will bend them back. Can I try? Can I try touching her antenna? Yeah. Sure, just be careful. Oh! Oh my gosh! Seriously, oh my I'm it! Oh my gosh, that is so creepy! One time, we know, one time I accidentally I flicked a yellow one. Come on. One time that was close. I accidentally flicked one one time. Okay, my man, back on your post. Trying to run away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, almost did. <laughs> okay, so of course, there are compound eyes, <laughs> which, as you can see, are the cute little bulbous eyes right there. You can kind of, if you if you look closely, you can kind of see a little black dot, which is their pupil. The, it is pretty awesome, too. I think she's very close to being an adult. Yeah, she should be one or two months, I think. Yeah, but um, one question. I think one more month until nice live stream mazes are cool. I'm mm -hmm. short lifespan keep. I have the one short question, though. Keep me away from pulling the plug and buying any. I have one question hmm. though. What? How old is she right now? A um, teenager? <laughs> 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 How 
old would she Silly be? Silly Coven. They, so she, so by the looks of it, she's probably, um, almost, she's probably preteen. If it, she, it was a human, she would be preteen right now. Preteen. <laughs> So, um, so we, so of course, um, so of course we have the head too, you know, the little ones with the antenna connected. See, she put them back, <laughs> and she has uh, three body parts, and the head is one, you know, like, head, thorax, abdomen. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> abdomen. <laughs> okay, so, then there is a thorax, and there is a thorax right here. Thorax, and then we. So of course, I learned the whole way never to grab them by that. So yep. the first spaces I had, um, I found on the, my porch when I was going on my first day of second grade. I did. Yeah, cool. my brother found saw it when I was when it when I was it was a shield of mantis. I think it was probably a shield of mantis. It was literally huge. Yeah, it, it was she so was, big. She was huge, but I accidentally grabbed her by the thorax. Was not fun. She <laughs> pinched. She you did her arms like this and pinched me. Yeah, they have a pretty good reach. They can reach really far back behind them. Yeah. Okay, okay, I'll just do it. Okay. Okay. I'm just kidding. I would never do so that. They have their reptilian arms. Okay, so of course their wings, which I actually had a crazy incident when I was uh, when I was trying to make my two truncatas. So my male truncata, when I was trying to put it in the container with the female, actually flew down. So this was in my cabin. Um, it actually flew down onto a chair where one of my dogs was sitting. He was lucky Raven was oh, in the boy. other room. <laughs> Raven would have snatched him up in a heartbeat. <laughs> <laughs> I remember one time Raven actually ate a butterfly and then spit out the butterfly's wing. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> Crazy. <laughs> and also and also one time she also did eat a spider. She was like, spider! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She is a pretty crazy bug eater. But she just looks a crazy flies dog. And I don't have. They helped me catch flies before I got my nets. Do both males and females have wings? Um, yes, they do. Um, but uh, they do not both fly. Females have extra organ, which is a mating organ. Plus, the females cannot fly because if the females could, then the males would all be gone. The females eat the males mostly. And usually, so they have to, so the males have to be able to get away quick if the female notices they're there. Yeah, actually, um, so females don't usually fly because they are usually sturdier, and that's because they need to eat larger prey or need to be able to catch more food so that they can lay eggs. But also, um, males are lighter, yeah, but that's because they need to usually fly farther in search of females because females will tend to be more sedentary and it's just much easier to have males fly and then there's also less competition for food that way because the males are much smaller um also typically the females what what we're starting to find especially is a lot of the early studies done on mantis cannibalism is it's kind of biased because they were done in inside a lab so the males don't have as much space and yeah. they guess and the females aren't as full and so usually we're finding in the wild actually that most of the times the females won't eat the male um it's actually a lot less common than we think and it's kind of just one of those myths that's perpetuated about mantises because it makes them seem more interesting for some reason even though they're already really interesting yeah um, i have one question though of course then we have the abdomen which is the head, thorax, abdomen, their Those box support where they have food. I mean, the, my other mantis had a little poop growing on the abdomen when I took her out. <laughs> um, and then we have the legs. You know, jointed legs. <laughs> okay. So, um, here, let me put this back here because we're done with it. Now be careful with it. 
Let's try to blow them off. It feels like this is one thing. It feels like there's shadow shadow in this. Okay. So how about we tell them how to care for a mantis? Sure. Let's do that. Okay. So of course I know that you taught me all of them. The um different ways that you can cut care for a for a prey mantis. So how about we teach everybody who's watching? Really? Yeah. Cool. We it's just got his first bug. It's a white bug. Cool. Well, <laughs> Commercial break. <laughs> Look, I'm good at this. Did you see it? No. <laughs> this is a good example of a boy. I know, who I now know that I can now catch a, a butterfly. He used to be scared of insects, and okay. Sadie has taught him to love them. Here are the wings, awesome. and yeah. let's let it go. Let it go. Okay. Good Here job. Go, I'm gonna catch it over. So what's involved okay. in taking care of a mantis, Sadie? You um, need to know what. So you need to know what what they what what species they are, what, what temperature they are, what humidity they are, um, and of course most mantises are the same with us, but some are different. Um, what to, um, um, how much what how many times you need to water them or spray them. How you uh, give them water, you know? Um, also, um, yeah. what they drink, like what type of water, and um, some other stuff. Here, I'll do Go this. ahead, do you want to explain some of the care? Yeah, sure. Um, so, and this is, um, I think they, there's a lot of different species from a lot of different habitats. Um, the thing that, like Sadie mentioned, the most important thing is you need to know what species you have and then from there you can figure out what kind of care it needs because the temperature and the humidity and the water that it needs all depends on the environment that it came from so if you have a desert species you probably don't need to water it as often um, it'll get most of its fluids from the food that it eats um, if it's a tropical species you want to make sure that it's given water you know pretty regularly because even with the moisture from the food that it'll eat it'll still be thirsty so um, yeah, knowing knowing what species you have is probably the most important thing because yeah. it'll affect the way you set up the enclosure and how so you do Exactly. This is so cool. <laughs> so, Sadie, do you want to show them how you keep track of your mantises and? Of course. So, of course, I have the, what species you are up here. Then what's the gender they are? That's the female sign. Um, let's see. Female, um, do I have, uh, it looks like I don't have a male out here. Oh wait, I do. Wait, this is male? Oh, I should put it back in then. I don't want to fly it off. Yeah, you don't want to. <laughs> then this is the male sign. We also kind of do color coordination. So the blue is what? So blue is male and pink is female so we can easily tell without having to look at it and then we have like adults right here like this you know then we have the name this way see then we have mated below adult you know <laughs> and why do you track that um we track it really cool um so we track this because we want to be able to make sure that we know um, how long it will be you know, until until they die. Because we want to make sure that we know that and that we be, are able to give them the best life. Um, we also like knowing how old they are and. Uh, how much experience they've had. It's pretty fun. Do you track their molts? Of course. <laughs> and I actually have molts right here for my hair to do See? Nice. Ah. That was a lot more. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Nice.
Can you explain what a molt, either one of you, what a molt means? Oh, I can explain it. Okay. Okay, yeah. There you go. <laughs> Would you like to explain it, though? Sure, I, I can go if you don't want to. Um, so, uh, um, when a insect molds, they're um, outgrowing their exoskeleton, so insects and other vertebrates have an exoskeleton. So, it's a, unlike mammals or things that have an endoskeleton, where the bones are inside of them, and that's the skeletal framework that's then built upon with muscle and other tissue, um, insects and other invertebrates, they have all of their gooey stuff, if you want to say, on the inside. So all their muscles and organs and tissues will be on the inside of their body. But to grow, they need to be able to break the exoskeleton and get out of it. And, you know, they'll develop their new exoskeleton. So whenever a man falls, for example, um, it needs to outgrow its old exoskeleton. So what it'll do is it'll hang upside down. It'll secrete a bunch of um, digestive enzymes to help separate the old exoskeleton from the new one that's developing underneath. And then it'll like open up the old exoskeleton and then emerge and then it'll dangle down and uh, it'll sclerotize, which means the exoskeleton will harden. And so once it's hardened, the mantis is basically ready to go and it'll be bigger and it'll kind of have some more, you know, like development, like those mantises as they grow, they get, you know, the lobes get bigger and the final ball for all insects have wings. So the final ball has wings, but yeah, it's basically just another stage in their life cycle. Yeah. Okay, so I knew about that. I just did not know about the enzymes. Yeah. I thought they just molded their skin when they got too tight. When it got too tight, it cracked, and then there's new skin underneath, ready, yeah, and then it would grow to their size. Okay, so then, Go ahead. Oh, yeah, sorry. Um, the new skin underneath is... So it has no way to get out because the exoskeleton is so strong, right? Because normally, if you think about it, like, when a mantis is catching food, right, it's really tough for the exoskeleton because it needs to be because if it was soft and squishy, the mantis might get hurt. But when it comes time to mold, it needs to oh, be some way to be able to, to escape the old exoskeleton to grow. And if that doesn't happen, then they just basically die because they have this new, bigger body inside this old exoskeleton that they can't get out of, so... Sadie, can you tell how you give a mantis water? Do you put a cup of water inside of their enclosure? Or? Uh, yeah. No. Well, no, no. We do not do that. That is the worst way to do it. You spray them with a squatter, like this. You spray the mantis? Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> no, you spray the enclosure. Good job. Like this. Yeah. And then how do they get the water? I'm trying to have to do it sideways. Are they using animals to um to put the water in their mouth and then they drink it? Okay. Do you think that we should do with the um, true pretty much facts to a false true or false? Sure. Yeah, we can both. Okay. The first one. <laughs> first question is pregnant. Prey mantises can turn their head a full 180 degrees. True or false? Well, low heat. I'm pretty sure we both know the answer. True. Right? So they can turn their heads how far? Um, they can turn their heads a full 180 degrees, unlike us. Which is crazy. That means they can turn their head all the way around and look behind them. It is crazy. Crazy. Only owl, owls are the only other ones I know that can do that. Okay, female primates always eat their mates. False. Right, Louie? Oh, I think we lost them. Oh. What do you feed mantises, Sadie? Um, well, you feed mantises either these fruit flies. Well, look at the how many they're all right there. It's best to get flightless ones. It's best to get flightless ones at the pet store. Um, and then the blue butterflies uh, or the next food. What are some other things you can feed them? Um, house flies at any age. Um, cockroaches. Though sometimes, but most times, it's just best to stick to flies. Um, out here, I actually can show you guys how I feed fruit flies.
here. Let me open these guys up. So what are these that you're feeding? Um, I'm feeding baby ghost mucuses. Here we go. Good boy. <laughs> oh, it looks like Lohan said his phone ran out of battery, so you gotta, you get to finish this out. <laughs> well, let me put that little guy in there. Thank okay. you. <laughs> oh, he's changing it. He'll be back on in a sec. Okay. We'll feed these. Perfect. Okay. What do they look? Oh, look at that guy. Just caught one. Yeah. See what that? Oh, I bet that guy's going to try and steal his food. Oh, come on, boy. Back in. Here, let me put these in so that we know fruit flies get out. So hit his back. Let me add him on. So while Manideology is coming back, um, go, why don't, oh, there he is. There we go. <laughs> okay. Awesome. No worries. We um, waited for you on the second question because yeah. you, touch, oh, you. you touched base on this. So say, do you want to read it? Um, true or false? True or false, female pregnancies always eat their mates, which is false. Mm -hmm. Definitely false. Uh -huh. um, it's a lot less common than we think, and it's more common in species where there's um, a cold period because they need to be able to get nutrients enough to lay before the cold season sets in. Yeah. Also, some species of primates don't even eat each other unless they are like completely different age. Yeah. There's some species of mantis that really won't ever eat each other, um, especially because they have ways to communicate within their species, like um, boxer mantises, for example, will generally avoid um, eating each other and communicate using their um, fly. four limb markings, so, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Adult premiances can live for two years. False, because it varies, the time they are alive varies depending on how much of the care they get. Um, and what species they are, right, you yeah. Exactly, yeah. So some species of mantis can definitely live quite long as adults. Um, I've had an orchid mantis that made it almost two years as an adult, but um, there's also some species of mantis that will only live three or four months um, post-adult molt. So, it, yeah, like you said, it varies depending on the species. Mm -hmm. Great mantis will only, will eat only live fruit. Well, that can be varied sometimes. Right, Lohi? Like, if you have a fly, you know, a dead fly, and you're like shaking it a very lot in front of the mantis, they sometimes will think it's slime? Right, yeah, so you can, um, cause, because the um, trigger to feed is, is motion, and the way the thing that they're looking at moves, um, if it moves close enough to a bug, they'll, even if it's dead, they'll, they'll go for it. Um, sometimes mantises will scavenge, so if they, they're eating something and they get disturbed and they drop it, um, and then they're left alone, they might decide to go back and if they sniff it out, they'll, they'll pick it up off the ground and eat it, but that usually doesn't happen. They'll just rather wait for something else that's alive to come by so they can kill it and eat it. <laughs> yeah, I've had that before. I mean, I usually have fly legs and wings on the ground of my prey mantis containers. Seems like my little girl is ready to come out. Now I put my hand under her this time as I try and get to it. Here, let's get this girl out. Here she is. Um, so the next one, number five. Oh my gosh, this one is definitely balls. Mises, cream mises lay their eggs deep underground to come uh, up, to come out in the spring. Totally false. <laughs> what, do, what do they do? 
they lay their eggs in a cases, you know, like the one I showed you, and they put them on trees or the branches. Oh, you caught another one, bro. Cool. Do you want to let go this time? No, keep it. Let's keep it. Yeah, but I don't have the supplies to make a, a proper container for it, bro. Let's just feed it to the prime mantises. Cool. <laughs> That's exactly what I would do. He's learning. He's learning. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> what? It is a good catch. It's true. It's good food. I good mean, job. I can't <laughs> yeah, but we can always catch them, bro. Okay, okay. I'll just feed it to one of the prime mantises. Don't. Come on, can you please feed it? Okay, we can feed it to one of these. Okay. Yay. How about this girl, the girl that's out? No, 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 because, uh, um, hand feed. Because then if we don't have feed, it'll just fall it. Yeah, I know. Here, Man. let me, let me catch I it. I keep catching these, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And this one is the same color. It's still white. Here. It'll be easier if you twist it. Can you twist it? Who taught you this trick? Yeah. Sadie, who taught you Draw that trick? Draw the wings. <laughs> Look, um, it shapes of nature. Yep. <laughs> Here, girl. Here. Oh. Oh, please don't not eat Here. me. Please do not eat me. Time for mantis. Please do not eat me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Seriously, girl? I oh, win. She's faking dead. <laughs> oh, oh, please do not eat me. Hold it, hold it by one of the wings so that it'll flutter, and then she might go for it. Because otherwise she thinks it's like a big, big finger. She's like, oh. But if you do just one wing and it flutters around, then she might, she might try to get it. It's not. Hmm. <sighs> Is it alive? Yeah. Here, let me let go. Next true false? Okay, next true false. Prey mantises use specialized legs to do front legs to capture their prey. True. As you can see on her, I really wish I named her tiger. Please look at those stripes. I did not catch it. Go ahead, can you talk about <laughs> their, not, their front it. legs and how they are quick to catch things? Oh, there they are. Pulled back. They're actually pretty fun catching bugs. So they use those two front legs? Yeah. Huh? Can you please get me a butterfly net? Please. <laughs> it's actually pretty fun at catching them. Okay. Cool track. I was asking, um, are okay, nets venomous? The answer is no. Or poisonous? No, they are not venomous or poisonous. Okay, so the next true and false is premises have two eyes but only one ear. False. Um, true. Really? Where is their ear located, Sadie? I'm on the abdomen. Really? Oh gosh. It, but it's only on flying mantises because they, because at night when they do it. Let's see what Lohit has to say. So, um, mantises have some some mantises have what's called a cyclopean ear. Um, so that's the one ear that you're talking about. Um, and it's located between their middle and hind legs. Um, underneath, and yeah. it has several different um, shapes in different species. Um, but they do it to uh, listen t to listen for the uh, bats or not. Am I correct? Yes. Yep. And then, so if a male is flying and he or a female is flying, or there's a few females that fly or something, then if they hear that the frequent like a bat call, they'll just dive drive down to avoid being caught. Most mantises live in the United States. False. Oh. Most primaces <laughs> live in Brazil or tropical islands. Yeah, most the man, the most mantis diversity is in the tropics for sure. Um, mantises are most diverse in warm areas, so rainforests, desert habitat. Um, so yeah, uh, South America and the Amazon um, is where the largest known diversity of mantises currently. Um, Southeast Asia is second highest, and then Africa 
tropical Africa would be the third. What is the best way to tell the gender, male or female? Um, usually, um, it is by things that you can only tell once they're bigger. Like? Um, like their hands, like um, their heads, um, and uh, how, how their size, you know, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, generally females will be bigger and stockier, um, they have thinner antennae, um, they're yeah. overall more robust. Uh, the, you can tell as nymphs in some species by really obvious um, like things, by like, like ghost mantis, for example, the crests are different shapes when they're young, um, so you can tell around fourth instar pretty easily. Orchid mantises have different hind lobes at third instar, so you can tell at that point if it's a male or a female. Yeah. Um, but um, the one way that works for every mantis species is um, checking the end of the abdomen, the terminalia. So the last few segments are different males and females. Um, females have six um, visible overall segments um, in their abdomen. If you count from the bottom, males will have eight. And the different colors of mantises are ways that they can camouflage themselves. Is that right? Uh -huh. Yeah. So, so some species will be um, different colors based on environmental factors. Um, for some species, it's genetic. Pretty cool. Yeah. Cool how they do that. Yeah. Huh? How about we ask you questions? Yeah. yeah, sure. Let's see. There was one I just saw. How do you know the egg sac hatch? Sadie, right. you have an interesting story about that, don't you? Oh, yeah. So, the first time me and my family got an egg sac, um, so it was one of those double egg sacs for your garden, but we were going to keep them as pets. Um, but, one, but, we a but one hatched, and we accidentally put the one that had hatched out, and the one that had hatched in. Many of my mantises were everywhere after that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I still find mantis stems in my room sometimes because even when I'm moving things that have hatched, I always miss one or two and they just end up on my ceiling or something the next day. So, yeah, <laughs> just them around. Green on Green said, Are pre mantises formal friendly eating insects but not plants? Yeah, they are red carnivores. I mean, insectivores yeah. because they eat insects. And the big ones will eat the occasional hummingbird and stuff, but. <laughs> That's, that's awesome. Come on, <laughs> wow. <laughs> but yeah, mantises are really great um, predators. They eat an immense amount of biomass. That just means they eat a lot of other animals. So um, I think there was a one study that was done on a stagmomantis species, I think, in Carolina. And they, they checked how much, um, how many insects, just the number that they ate from hatch till um, death. And it was like, 200 something for one female or something like that. So they, they ate a, a crazy amount of insects in their lifetime. Wow. Um, and guess what? I have this right here. This is uh, the third one. Well, well, the third uh, thing that is here. The third worksheet you can yeah, download third worksheet for your kids. You yeah. For kids. Yeah. Um, someone asked how long to wait to introduce a male to a newly molted female. Uh, Arthropod ambassadors ask that. Hmm. What do you uh, do with stocks after? Wait, wait, they answer hatch? that one. Yeah, that, that depends on the species. Um, so, ghost mantises, you could introduce as early as two weeks if the female's receptive. I mean, you can try. I've had, I've had females that will mate as early as two weeks. Um, and then, for some species, the maturity period could be over a month and a half to two months, like there are bodies. So. It, it kind of just depends on the species, awesome. how much they're getting as well. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Those of you who don't follow Mantideology, you should because he has taught Sadie. She will tell I'm you. Lost. Yep. About me. <laughs> maybe, maybe a little bit. <laughs> and he is such a good teacher, so patient with her, and yeah, she just adores him. Yeah, it's. So Thank fun. You. Yeah. He's awesome. You should follow him. He has so much knowledge and is super helpful. Yeah. Um, um by the way, sister Joyce, um, um so you can keep them or you can throw the sacks away um after they hatch. Oh the oops? Okay. Yeah. 
so it's time for us to do the bug dance. So Sadie has a bug dance she always ends, ends her class with. And there's kids me. that are doing it with her while they watch. Have you seen it yet? Lohit, have you seen her dance? I, I don't think I've seen the dance yet. Okay, no. well, it's a, it's it's about uh, it's it's about insects. So let's let's yeah. go for it, Sadie. Okay. So first, I'm gonna do it really slowly for the newcomers so they can do it with me. Okay. So head, thorax, abdomen, joints and legs. Head, thorax, abdomen, joints and legs. Antenna, con, and <laughs> then the next is skeleton. Head, thorax, abdomen, joints and legs. Okay. I'm going to do it fast, and anybody who wants to can join me. And a little louder. Okay. okay. Ready? Oh, I'm sorry, Go. Head, thorax, abdomen, jointed legs. Head, thorax, abdomen, <laughs> jointed legs. It's him and come on that, and an exoskeleton. Head, thorax, abdomen, jointed legs. <laughs> Mantidiology, thank yeah. you. Of course, I'm glad to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Yep, you're awesome. Yeah. Thanks so much for helping me, and I am so happy that we got to co-teach. Yeah, Not ready for my next bug class. Yeah, I would love to. I mean, now that uh, I live in California, we I can uh, come over anytime. <laughs> <laughs> we did move out of our cabin. <laughs> <laughs> She's gonna be knocking on your door with a bug net. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. All right. Thanks, everybody.